Hello, welcome to your virtual master class, courtesy of Marshall University. <laughs> um, I understand everybody here is a low brass player, trombone, euphonium, and tuba. So I'm going to talk about some things that are common to us, especially, but probably all brass instruments. By the way, that uh, first tune that you've heard, that's an old English folk song called Scarborough Fair. It was arranged by Bill Reichenbach, who is uh, if you've ever seen a Star Wars movie or practically any Hollywood movie, you heard him playing bass trombone. And that was our resident trombone quartet of our, our students here. Uh, actually, let me introduce Jacob. This is, this is Jacob Lambert. He's a senior in music education and music business student, and he's playing bass trombone. You can see he is a little bit bigger. Uh, Zach Cleary, don't hurry yourself. <laughs> Zach Cleary is a senior music performance major, and he just finished his junior recital and is going to do one next semester. And Jeff Hutchinson is a sophomore jazz studies major, and you'll you'll hear from him later on too. The things I wanted to talk about um, that are common to all brass players and that, that we especially need are the three B's, breathing, buzzing, and your brain. First, the breathing. These are wind instruments, so it takes air to play them. Air, wind is just air that's moving. So in order to move your air, first of all, you have to take in a lot of it. The bigger your instrument and the lower you're playing, the more you're going to need. Uh, you've probably heard your band director say something like, support your tone or take a big breath and not necessarily tell you how. Well, what you want to do, you can tell you're getting a good breath by the amount of noise that you're making when you breathe in. If you're making a lot of noise, you're not getting all the air that you could. So if you're going like or, or there's something stopping in the way that's in the way of the air getting in. So the first thing you want to notice is the, the sound that you make when you breathe in. That's almost, almost silent. If, you, if you've ever been to the doctor and have them stick that little wooden thing down on your tongue to open up your throat, he tells you to say what? He says, ah. And that's what you want to be thinking when you breathe in. That opens everything up, and there's nothing in the way, and you can get a whole lot more air without hardly any effort. Also, the natural tendency when people tell you to breathe in and lots of air is to go and raise your shoulders and tense up. And that's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. You want to breathe from down here. If you just relax this and think, ah, the air comes in all by itself. You don't even have to work for it. So you breathe in, and then you push the air out from down here. And people go into all sorts of complications about breathing and supporting your tone, but that's really all you have to do. Breathe low, make a low sound, and then push it out from the bottom. Now, in order to get your instrument to make a sound, for us, what we do is we have to buzz our lips. Now, not everybody, especially when you're first starting, not everybody can uh, control the, the buzzing that, with just your lips by themselves. But if you use your mouthpiece, you can control the sound a lot better. So then what I do, before I even uh, put my horn together, I will buzz my mouthpiece just all by itself. And what you want to do, start off by just making uh, a siren. And gradually expanding the range. And you want to make it smooth all the way up and down without any breaks. Then, 
Uh, the next thing I like to do is I will play a song on the mouthpiece. One of the ones I like to have all my students do to start off with is uh, Country Road because, well, everybody, at least everybody in West Virginia knows that one. Um. So find a note and buzz a simple tune, Country Road, uh, Three Blind Mice, uh, My Country Tis of Thee, anything like that that follows the scale. The reason you want to do that is it trains your ear to, you hear the song in your head, and makes you do whatever it takes to get the right pitch to come out buzzing your lips. And if you're buzzing the right pitch, and if you have your valves, the, the right valves down and your slide in the right position, you're gonna have a good sound. Okay, there's an F. If I buzz an F and then put the horn together, it sounds good. I can buzz a G, I buzz a G, the horn forces it down to an F, but that didn't sound nearly as good. So you want to make sure that you're buzzing the pitch that your fingers or your slide are set up for. Then after you after you buzz your your tune like Country Road or uh, or Hot Cross Buns or whatever. Um, then play it on your instrument without looking at any music. What the, and you won't get it right the first time, I guarantee. If you do, uh, uh, we're ready for you to come to college right now. But try to play it on your instrument and figure it out, this trial and error. Oh, I don't like the sound of that note, that wasn't right. By figuring out, you'll develop sort of an automatic pilot from here from your brain to your instrument. And that's the brain part of it. If you learn to play simple tunes like that by ear, you will, you'll develop that automatic pilot. And any scale that you know, you can play your tune in that key. for playing in that key. And believe it or not, playing things by ear like that will make you better at reading music. It'll make you a better sight reader because you'll have that ability to hear it and then automatically do what it takes to get that, that music to come out. The less you have to think about stuff like that, like, uh, like what position or what valves do I use, and the more automatic it is, the better you're going to be able to play. So, and that, those are my, those are my words of wisdom for how to be a better low brass player or any kind of brass player. And I would venture probably any, any sort of player. Tra train your, train your breath, train your buzzing and train your brain. And now we'd like to play one more piece for you. Uh, this is a piece called 2002, which was written in 2002 by James Kasich, who is a staff arranger for the Army Band in Washington, D.C. And he's also a trombone player, so he knows, he knows what trombones can do. And by the way, we can also play the melody an awful lot, which we didn't always get to do when we were in, say, middle school band. At least I didn't. All right, this is the Minute March by James Casey. Oh. 